All right, welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why Vontez Perfect is about to take Marvin Lewis down. And I'm Colin Coward. I know, I know, dressed like a blackjack dealer. I'll tell you why one of Dak Prescott's most important teammates could be very upset with what he said. Speak for yourself starts now. Hit! Hit me! Yes, <laughs> hit! Stay on a soft 17, Coward. That's tricks of the trade in Vegas. All right, hello and welcome. We're joined today by a couple of Super Bowl champs, Greg Jennings and Seth Joyner. Let's start with Colin Kaepernick. Everyone's picking sides this offseason about whether or not Kaepernick should have a job in the NFL. And now a guy who's actually good at playing quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, has weighed in, telling the ESPN the magazine, quote, I think he should be on a roster right now. I think because of his protest, he's not. I think the best way I can say this is I don't understand what it's like to be in that situation what it is to be profiled or pulled over, or any number of issues that have happened that Colin Kaepernick was referencing or any of my teammates have talked to me about, but I know it's a real thing my black teammates have to deal with. All right, Cowherd, will Rogers' support help Kaepernick get signed? Well, Brady's support got Trump elected, so it's certainly <laughs> possible. <laughs> uh, no, um, I like my quarterbacks to talk. I like him to be more quarterback than activist, but I like him to talk, and I like that he talked. I don't think it's going to get uh, Kaepernick signed. Um, we had Dak Prescott come out and conversely say, I'm never going to sit for the anthem. Um, I think we're getting high-profile people to talk about it. I think that's very, very healthy. I like it. I am pro-protesting, pro-kneeling. If you have to, I wouldn't do it. But I don't think it has any lasting effect more than a high-profile person. Actors talk about stuff all the time. Movie stars do. It doesn't change policy. I, I read a great deal of this story. It's a long piece. Uh, Aaron Rodgers actually went to the home of the writer. Uh, Aaron Rodgers actually tape recorded the conversation uh -huh. because very cautious guy. Uh, and, and so I, I just don't know what else he could say. Aaron Rodgers is cautious. He took a tape recorder. Rather than having the reporter in his home, he went to the reporter's home. So obviously he's very guarded. And so when asked the Kaepernick question to a man who's very guarded, there's really only one option. Yeah, I think he should be in the league. Because if you say anything else, you've launched a storm. And so I don't think this will help. I think Aaron Rodgers has said what any white quarterback asked that question uh, probably has to say. Why you keep looking at me? I'm looking around. <laughs> I'm just looking around. I'm trying to... <laughs> Go ahead, John um, <laughs> I love the fact that Aaron Rodgers came out and supported. This is what I like to see from more players around the league. Support the guy. You know, what he said is, is spot on. He is better, he is just as good as the top 64 quarterbacks in the league, no if, 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 if not better than half of those. Um, he should have a job in the league. Aaron Rodgers is spot on, and I just want to see more players come to come to his defense rather than being divisive and talking about what he can't do. Look, this is a guy that took a team to a Super Bowl, was that close to winning the Super Bowl. So to tell me that he can't play, his skills might not be where they need to be, but his skills are a heck of a lot better than a lot of quarterbacks that are on the roster right Roger now. Roger Staubach took teams to the Super Bowl, too. Should he be playing? Stan Humphreys. If he was 40 years younger, yeah. Right, right. Yeah, I don't, I mean, <laughs> obviously, what Aaron said was great. I agree with you. I think it was great that he even took a chance because he is guarded, very calculated. He understands what it means to respond to a situation like this. But it's not going to get Colin Kaepernick a job. This isn't, the, the, the difference about, with the NFL versus like the National Basketball Association. The players, they have a say. The LeBron James, the Kevin Durant, the stuff, they have influence, major influence on their teams in that league within their, their organizations. So when Chris Jackson the, and Craig Hodges got ran out of the NBA, it's because the NBA is so tolerant and the NFL isn't. Well, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Oh. I'm not saying that, but, <laughs> but you, have, you didn't have players standing up and supporting them like you have now. But in the NFL, it's about the shield first, not the players. And players know that. You, and players know that. By the way, college football is about the coach. Absolutely. That's and, their shield. And so for me, I think it's great that Aaron Rodgers, I, the most, the number one takeaway that I took away from this was he said, I don't understand 
But I do, what I do understand is that it is an issue in that my position is completely different than theirs. My, my experiences are different than theirs, but I support them in what they, what they go through and what they have to deal with. I know I don't have to. For the 25 years I've been doing this, nobody ever comes up with me and says, I love what you said about this, although I totally disagree. We are in a society now that seeks affirmation, not information. What I like about this story is Aaron's on one side and Dak's on the other. And I agree with both of them. People only like opinions when they agree with them. Regardless of the side, Dak said, I'm an anthem guy. Aaron's like, I get the Neil guy. That's healthy. There are countries, provinces, and jurisdictions you can't criticize the flag, the, prime, the dictator, the religion. I like that two star quarterbacks took opposing sides. I just happen to believe, perhaps wrongly, that Dak was honest and Aaron Rodgers said what he had to say. Because if Aaron Rodgers was really down for the cause, you know what? He's got a lot of power in Green Bay. You know what? Kaepernick should be my backup quarterback. Kaepernick should be on our roster. No. If, keep... That's not going to... Th well, that's... clearly it's not going to happen because it's, it ain't what he believes. But, believe. but, but you, you can always, when you're in the position that Aaron Rodgers is in, is defer not to even answer yeah, the question. Absolutely. So, so he, he, he answered, he answer, answered the question. Spin it. Well, spin it if you want to. But then... but. I think he's honest because he spoke what he felt. He spoke what he thought. He spoke about things that he talked to his teammates about in support of Colin Kaepernick. He did not have to say anything. All he had to do was say, you know what, I really don't want to touch that. Hey, it's Jason McIntyre, and before we move on to the next topic, I wanted to talk to you about ZipRecruiter. I started TheBigLead.com, and I know firsthand how challenging it is to put the right team together. With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to 100 plus job sites with just one click. Then their powerful technology efficiently matches the right people to your job better than anyone else. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other job sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on candidates finding you, it finds them. In fact, 80% of employers who post a job on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site within one day. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Simply screen, rate, and manage candidates all in one place with ZipRecruiter's easy-to-use dashboard. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by businesses of all sizes to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That's right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com speak. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash speak. One more time, to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash speak. Start building your perfect team right away. Now, let's get back to the show. All right, welcome back to the show. Greg Jennings is back, and we're joined now by Colin Cowherd's co-host on The Herd, Christine Leahy. Let's return to Colin Kaepernick, whose activism continues to divide people across the NFL now Dan Wolken of USA Today wonders about what the reaction might be if college football players decide to follow in Kaepernick's football footsteps, writing, quote, what would happen if a star college football player, particularly at a high-profile school in the Deep South, wore a Black Lives Matter shirt during warm-ups or used a post-game media session to talk about police brutality and racial profiling rather than the game? All right, Cowherd. Will college players emulate NFL protests this season? <laughs> no. What would happen if that happened with Nick Saban? You wouldn't play next week against Vanderbilt. Mm. Come on. NFL players, some have real leverage. They have guaranteed money. The organization's $80 million into them. You got to get something out of it. You can't have dead cap money. Players, quarterbacks, stars, players in pro sports have leverage. Heck, the NBA is a player's league, not even a coach's league. College players... You do get that Alabama every year, USC every year, Ohio State every year, gets 25 new number one picks. You have an attitude, they draft six, they, they recruit six mm. running backs a year. I agree. And four that, defensive ends a year. You know what that means? They got a lot of disgruntled people. 
that thought they were headed to the NFL, that thought they were going to be millionaires, and they get to their junior or senior year, and it's like, hey, what can I do since I'm the backup player and Nick Saban or whoever my coach is has screwed me over? What can I do? Oh, that's right. I can complain about injustices somewhere and start my Twitter profile growing and people like Dan Wolken who are writing pieces basically begging them to do it because that's what this piece was. Hey, here's some ideas for you guys. If you want to join Colin Kaepernick, wear T-shirts before the game Black Lives Matter. Do I think some college kids are going to take the bait? Absolutely. If any college team told their players that they cannot protest or in any way prevented it, that would be a huge problem, especially Absolutely. if that got out. And I'm not for preventing them yep. from doing that. But uh, what Dan Wilkin actually mentioned in his article was that he was for trying to make it more of a group thing rather than one individual player protesting by himself, which I am in support of because I wouldn't want to see one college kid get called out or treated or have the backlash that Colin Kaepernick has for doing what he's doing. So if they can do it in some sort of group setting, I think that would be better and beneficial in a college setting. And also, there's a difference. Some national anthems in college are in the locker room. Yeah, the and players some are out, are. And some are out on the field. So it's it looks a little different. Yeah, Colin, you mentioned leverage. And <clears throat> I completely disagree. I don't think it has anything to do with leverage. Nothing to do with leverage. It's It has everything to do with the platform. You give someone a platform and an opportunity to, to make a statement, and they have just that right to make a statement. And so what we've seen in times past, whether it be with handshake, touchdown celebrations, whatever, you see it in the pros, you see it in college. The more you see it in the pros, the more it trickles into college. So what, we've, what we're seeing over the course of the NFL, over across our league, you are definitely going to see it happen in college football. And I believe that I don't think it's, I don't think it's fair for us to say uh, don't do it or do it because, and I think, it's, I think it's one of those things where I think sometimes we underestimate the, the knowledge that these, athletes, these student athletes have. I just took my kids on a trip to the National Museum of African American History and Culture. My youngest two, who are six and four years old, it impacted them. I'm not saying it didn't impact my older two. My, my six-year-old cried, my four-year-old cried for two different reasons, because it touched them in different areas. So it, it, it's, it's a matter of if it indirectly affects you or directly affects you, whatever you feel in, in, when it comes to our societal climate, our economic climate, whatever, social issues, however you feel it affects you, you should be able to showcase that. Okay, but the question is, yeah. will college football players emulate the NFL? Outside of Belichick, fans all want their coaches fired. In college, the communities worship the coaches. You get a player out of line, Saban's the king, or Bob Stoops was the king. Outside of Belichick, players who make money are resistant. College unpaid 18-year-olds in a town that worship Saban are going to go out on their own? I think you create what a completely different issue there. Like, to your point, I, I, you create a completely different issue if you, if you stop right them from no, doing no, it. No, you don't have to. There's unspoken things. Like what Nick, if that gets out? What if some of the No, Nick doesn't have that. to say anything. It's understood Nick runs the Kyle, show. Okay, are you watching what's going on on college? Yes, campus? but I don't sit on social media, no, no, and I no. think a lot of it's overstated. Cal Berkeley, did you see the Cal fight? Berkeley is I, so far okay. left. Okay, well, let, let's, go, let's go to Ole Miss. Let's, let's go to Southern School. Yeah, let's Alabama. go to Ole Miss. I want to yeah. go to Ole Miss. Yeah. What just happened? Literally, they had some retreat for college Greek organizations, yeah. black and white. They had to shut it down because... Two black girls saw a banana peel on a tree that some kid couldn't find a trash can and put a banana peel on a tree because he couldn't find a trash can. They felt they were offended. They shut the whole thing down and everybody went home. That's the college climate we have right now. People are walking out of their dorms. People are walking. Look, where can I be offended? But the football culture isn't the left-wing academic culture. The football culture is coach. You're not coach, listening to these athletes. Coach. By the way, all these college athletes years ago were offered you to unionize. None did. 
They were offered to be paid. They could vote yes. They voted no. If they have all this power, they were offered the opportunity to get paid. In liberal Northwestern, they voted no. Kyle, I'm just saying, all this control that you think these coaches have over players, they were, I mean, I'm just I'm sitting, talking college, not no, pro. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I'm sitting here thinking about great friend of mine. I'm going to just say his first name, Moles. I saw him beat up our defensive line coach right on the field. <laughs> you know, they just don't have this control. And if I had a shot at the offensive line coach, Dave McAdoo, I, I certain that's one of my big regrets. And so they just don't have the control. <laughs> that I, you by the think way, I am not saying kids. I'm not telling people what to do. What I'm saying is, if you think it takes courage for a millionaire, I don't think it's a much pro time. millionaire to to battle a coach. What about an 18 year old? battling Nick Saban. That's a tough spot for a kid. I need to bring my coach in here because he, I went to war him. with him every day and I wasn't even that good. Greg Jennings, Seth Joyner here. Let's move to Cincinnati where Bengals linebacker Vontez Burfecht was just suspended five games for a recent hit on a defenseless receiver. Even still, that didn't stop his coach Marvin Lewis from defending the notoriously dirty player. In my opinion, Vontez has changed. He's learned, he's changed, he's, he's that, but he's a 250-pound man that hits like a dynamite. I mean, it's like hitting hit, hit by a cement truck, and, and that's the way he's going to play. You know, that's just the way he plays. He's got great hip explosion. That's why the, the player he is. He's got great hip explosion. The dynamics of his body are such that uh, he's like getting hit by a 300-pound person. Whitlock, should Marvin Lewis stop defending Vontez Burfecht? Listen, I hope my brother doesn't watch today because my brother lives in Cincinnati, so I immediately think of him when I see Marvin Lewis. This reminds me of my brother's first marriage. He, he oh, she's changed. And he done told us all these terrible stories about her, and we're all, don't marry her, Jim. Don't do it. Oh, she's changed. She's changed. <laughs> she hits like a 300-pound Mack truck. And a thing lasted six months. Dude was afraid to eat his food that she cooked. The whole, it was a nightmare. <laughs> Vontez Burfecht is going to take Marvin Lewis out. You can't turn that dude into a guy you can win with consistently. He's going to go down with Vontez Burfecht, and I love Marvin Lewis. Uh, I think you have to support him. I think uh, Marvin's in a tough spot right now. You know, I like Marvin Lewis. I've defended him. Uh, he took a chaotic organization, and they're stable now, and they draft well, and they're always playoff viable. But when you have top players and you're on the hot seat, you've got to support the room. Because players care about players. They don't care about Paul. Players care about, can he play? Dude can play. He and, can cost you games. Okay. You remember the and playoff he can, game he okay. cost him? All right, I'm not denying that. Dude can play. You start bailing on your best players, you know who turns on you? Your other best players. Marvin the league has games. turned on Burfitt. You know, the problem is when I look at these, these clips, you can't tell me that dude has changed. Now, I love Marvin because Marvin is one of the few coaches in the league that will take borderline fringe, disciplined, character-type guys and give them a second chance. Yeah. The problem I have is you never see the growth beyond that. These guys do the same thing. Pac-Man, Bontez Burfick, the list just goes on and on and on and on. When do you sit down and have a conversation with dude and be like, come on, I mean, listen, you just can't do stuff like this. Because when you're, when you're coaching youth football, you talk to your kids about doing things that don't hurt the team, okay? And all he does is dumb things that hurts the team. And the problem is he's been like that forever. I live in Arizona. I watched this kid at Arizona State yeah. almost destroy that, that team doing this same nonsense. And nobody would pull him to the side and have a conversation with him and tell him, dude, chill. Because this game, th th what's going on on the field is bigger than just you, okay? And some of the things that he does, yeah, it's, it's, it's legal. You know, I, I read here. It, it's, it's a legal hit, okay? But in today's NFL, you've got to adjust with how the rules have adjusted. And if he continues to play this way, I foresee a full year suspension. That will get his attention. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And, and really quick, to your, it's strong that you say that, being on that side of the ball, playing that position, and to hear your, your take on this. For me, as a, as a receiver... And watching that, it was unnecessary. Is it legal? Yes, but is it necessary? Was that impacting the play any 
any iota? No. So let it go. You know your perception around the league. You know how people view you around the league. Why would you make? Why would you put yourself right back in that yeah, position? Yeah, but isn't the onus on the league and not Vontez? The Rupert? onus is on. That should on, be illegal. The onus is on you as the player to not put yourself and the team in that position. That's a legal hit. But to the no, they they suspended in Colin. They're trying to get these hits out of the game. Exactly. L listen, here's the thing, and. I've been a huge Marvin Lewis supporter. I take a lot of heat because I think Marvin can coach. What he's going to allow Vontez Burfick to do, because when Vontez comes off the suspension, he'll do something else stupid. And when Marvin gets fired this year, he will be worthy of a second job. But his reputation will be, man, that's the Pac-Man Jones guy. That's the Vontez Burfick guy. He's about to be the, Von the art browse of professional football. Like, he ain't going to get a second job because of Vontez Burfick. All right, to Dallas, where the Cowboys are still awaiting the outcome of Ezekiel Elliott's appeal of his six-game suspension. Either way, Dak Prescott doesn't sound too concerned about life without Zeke. Uh, yeah, I don't think this offense is going to be much different. I mean, the way our team is built um, is kind of the way we played last year, just in a physical offensive line that wears people down. Uh, we've got great receivers to go make plays in the passing game. And as I said before, no matter who we put in a running back, I mean, I think both of those guys have been pro bowlers in their career. so. It uh, really doesn't matter. Kyra, was that a mistake? Yep, I tell my kids, the burden in the room is always on the more mature person. Always. Your life's only ruined if you get in the car of an immature high school boy. So you drive, always. The burden's on you. The burden here is not on the less mature Zeke. It's on the more mature Dak to realize Zeke is immature and that's going to land poorly. And Zeke's going to take offense to it and Zeke's going to be bothered by it. Dak has to take the responsibility in that moment. Okay, how is this going to land on my reportedly immature team? Even his father's... Spurrier the rod, spoil the child. They're bringing out a little wood on Zeke, and he <laughs> needs it. Seriously. That's, that, Dak, I guarantee you, is working in concert with Jerry and that entire coaching really? staff. We're coddling Zeke too much. Dak is saying he's putting a little stiff on me. Remember, everybody, it's Dak and Zeke, Dak and Zeke. Dak, no, 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 it's Dak. And then it's Dez. Then Zeke, when you clean up your little potty mess and start behaving, we'll start talking about you again. But this train moves on. It moved on without Tony Romo, and it'll move on without Zeke Ueli. And if that don't land well with Zeke, that's on Zeke. That's, that's one of your things. That's a you problem. <laughs> Listen, I, I, think that, I think that how he meant to say it, may have been a little misconstrued. As the quarterback and the leader of the football team, you're supposed to exude confidence that you can still get it done. My problem with how he said it and the timing of it all is, has more to do with his development than anything else. Because, yes, he was good last year. Some people would even say great last Are year. Are you talking Dak? Dak. Yeah. Okay? But let's not forget 1,500 yards, double-digit touchdowns, when you got that kind of production behind you, it's a lot easier to play the, play the position of quarterback, okay? And you can roll um, um, McFadden, and you can roll Alfred Morris into one, and you ain't getting that kind of production out of those two, no matter what you say. The train don't stop, man. I get, it. I get the train, train don't, don't stop. I get the train, train don't stop. stop. But we've been talking about his development, and can he take it to the next level? For the first six games this year, we about to find out because he ain't going to have the production that he had last year out of Zeke. He's not going to be able to, to, to get five, six yards on first down and stick that ball out on second down and run play action. He's going to have to stand in the Did pocket, like and he's going to have to get it done by himself. He's going to have to carry this team, and we're going to figure out this year just how good Dak Prescott really is. Look, he's the quarterback. He's the alpha male on this team. I have no problem with what he said. And, and as a player, no, you don't like it. No, any player who, I don't care if it's injury or what causes you to not be able to perform on Sundays or Thursdays or Monday nights, when you watch your team play, if they have success without you, it touches you a certain way. So for, but, but if you know you have guys who need to step up, you can't tell me you don't want your quarterback showing the utmost confidence in those guys. Agreed. You got two veteran guys who have been proven that they can be successful and be productive in this league. Why am I gonna why am I gonna dis disrespect them and act as though 
this is going to be a hard task for them to fill. We know what Zeke brings to the table. There's a he, fine line, Zeke. though. No, 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 no. He, no, there, he, no. There, there's he, a no. fine line between, oh, no. between giving those guys a thumbs up and alienating that, that 2 one not, four necklace that they both wear. Because Zeke might come back and just snap his you, when he come back off his suspension you're not, you're after not, hearing this. You're not, you're not, you're not doing that. They, we don't know their relationship off the field. We don't know what's said prior to this press or this, this comment that he's made. My thing is, Zeke, we, we have to play without you. That's that's the fact. That's the reality. So you are, you're out of the equation right now. So what I'm going to say is, it doesn't matter who we put back there. The train has to continue to go down the tracks. <laughs> Are they, the, the number one thing they're going to miss is his, his catching out of the backfield and his pass protection. So let me ask you a question. If Aaron Rodgers, when you played in Green Bay, had said something like that about you, how would you internalize that? Okay. Shannon, <laughs> Shannon, asked, me, Shannon asked me the same thing. I would, I would feel disrespected. Thank yeah. you. I would. But given the circumstances... Number one, he's not going to be saying this about me because I'm not going to have off the field issues like that. I get that. that. But and, and, and it would have bothered you. It would, and you're mature. It would bother me. It, hands down, it would bother me. But I get it. As a player, you know, next man up. Yeah, but Zeke. So it, hold on, wait a minute. So if you get hurt or if something prohibits you from getting on the football field and one of your teammates say, I mean, the show don't stop, we got to keep rolling. They frying bacon over here without a fire. <laughs> you ain't fried bacon without a fire. Man, let, let, let me tell you the truth. There, there's me... a reason why my backup was a backup, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. There, there, and there's a reason why those two, those two guys are there's backup. There's a reason and Zeke, why you was an eighth-round pick. Look, let, 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 yeah. me tell you, let me tell you the truth. Yeah, because the evaluators <laughs> messed hey, up. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thank you. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. Cowherd has 100 vacation days in his contract. And you know what we do whenever he steps out? Next man up, keep it moving. We keep the pressure on him. It takes fire to cook bacon. First of all, I have, I take about four days off a year. <laughs> so I don't use my vacation. Welcome back, Christine Leahy is here and uh, joined by the founder of the big lead, Jason McIntyre. All right, let's move to the Cavs, sort of boring. Reportedly no longer <laughs> seeking a major prospect or high draft picks as additional compensation to complete the Kyrie Irving, Isaiah Thomas trade and will settle for a late first rounder or even a second rounder to make the trade work. All right, Whitlock, who has more to lose if the trade blows up, Cleveland or the Celtics? I think with everything, Cleveland and LeBron always have more to lose, more to win, more to everything, because it's LeBron James, and he's the biggest narrative in the NBA the last 15, 20 years. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think it's it's got to be Cleveland. They need to come up with some kind of trade that works for them, that puts them in position to compete with Golden State, gives them a chance to retain LeBron and or move forward without LeBron. So, of course, the Cavaliers have more. What are people calling this trade? Is it called the Jay Crowder trade? The seven-foot prospect trade? It's called the Kyrie Irving trade. Whoever ends up with him, that's the winner of the yeah, trade. But you think the Cavs are going to wind up with him? Well, at least I'll still have him and I can trade him. No he don't want to play with LeBron. That's the no, problem. Well, they, okay. The Cavs <laughs> work. lose this entire situation because if they take Kyrie back and they're going to want to trade him because LeBron doesn't want him, Kyrie definitely doesn't want to be there. You can't mend that relationship. Now everybody on the market knows you're desperate to get rid of Kyrie and you're not going to get a trade that's even close to as good as the one that Boston was offering. Although I don't think this is going to happen. I think what happened is the Celtics were very open and honest with the Cavs about Isaiah Thomas's situation. I think the Cavs saw the reaction to the trade and thought, hmm, maybe we could have gotten a little more. Let's do the physical. We're not happy with the physical. And now they're going to try to bargain for a little more, which, by the way, is completely legal. Even if the medical examination shows exactly what the Celtics revealed, they can still waive the trade. Yeah, Colin, remember this. In game three, Celtics-Cavs, Isaiah Thomas didn't play. The Cavs won. That was the only, uh, I'm sorry, the Celtics won. That was the only game they took in that series without Isaiah. He's not a good defender, right? So even if he stays in Boston and he's injured, they got Marcus Smart, Terry Rozier. They're a better defensive team. More shots for Tatum, more shots for Gordon Hayward. I, I think if they bring back Isaiah, it's a win for the Celtics. Oh, that's a micro, that's a micro story. If, if, like you said before, let's say the Cavs have to take back Kyrie. Everybody knows they're desperate. Everybody knew they were desperate a week ago. They're desperate because Kyrie ain't going to play with LeBron, and LeBron's pissed at Kyrie. 
So Cleveland's been desperate the minute that story broke. Because Kyrie said, I'm not coming back. So Cleveland's GM is like, okay. So, but at least I've got the Laguna Mansion, the Hamptons yeah. Beach House. I've got the asset, the Kyrie Irving trade. And okay, Kyrie's like a great asset. Like I explained to you on the other show, it's that, that great mansion that you have in the Hamptons. It's like if you're in a really bad divorce and everybody around you knows that you want to unload that property real fast. You do. So they're all going to lowball you. So you get the Milwaukee Bucks offer. That's what you get. But yeah. what, what you're saying, Kyrie. what you guys are saying is if, let's say Cleveland just says, we're not getting, we're doing it back. They won't be able to trade him? They will, but not, not for great, as great not of get, a deal. The okay, but what, are the de if, if I, what, what is the deal? A seven-footer, a high schooler, Jay Crowder. It ain't that great of a deal. A pick Where, that could be... Yeah. Uh, that could! And by the way, could. It's important to say they didn't, <laughs> they didn't protect that pick either, which tells me that Danny was doing the right thing. He's like, listen, we know Isaiah has, is hurt, and he didn't protect it. Yeah, without that pick, Colin, what's their future? Without who, LeBron, who, who? LeBron leaves Cleveland. They don't get the Nets' number one pick. What's their future? Well, they in haven't, Cleveland, they, have they haven't shown the ability. If that pick becomes a two or a three, you really trust Cleveland to nail it? They or, or, you, or you nail the pick and then package it for a trade. Hey, LeBron, who do you want? You want us to try to get Anthony Davis? In the history or package of the whatever NBA, you want? has anybody ever said this? Boy, the Lakers gave up way too much for Kareem. If you get the star, you win the trade. Because stars you win know, playoff whoa, whoa, whoa. games. You just compared Kareem to Kyrie. Man. Kyrie Irving. Okay, did anybody say this in Miami? Boy, the Heat gave up too much for Shaq. Now no. you just compared Kyrie to Shaq. Kyrie <laughs> Irving is, is the best closer in the league. But that's fine, but he's never going to play with LeBron. Okay, that's that, done. No, 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 it's we over. know that. But I'm saying is, let's say it, if it goes back, okay, I'll ask you this. If it, let's say it goes back. Everybody gets their original pieces. What fan base is most upset? Boston, because for a minute they thought, we're getting to the finals. And also, the Cavs look really bad, and I bet there are a lot of GMs out there that are very tentative to do a deal with Now, that's, that argument hold. Now, that I can argue, that he's a rookie GM. That's actually a good point. People go, oh, good God, that rookie GM, he doesn't know what he's doing. Right. Danny's reputation's already kind of cemented. He's a smart dude. But listen, he all, I, given Kevin Garnett all I know is this. <laughs> if you have four parcels of land, and you have two duplexes, and you've got three duplexes, and I got the mansion, I can find your stuff. You can't get my mansion. That's the <laughs> asset. <laughs>